Hello, everybody. Um, I thought we could screw around with some beading stuff today and show you some of my little... These are just little um, dangles that I've been putting together. I used a few different types of wire. Um, this one I haven't put a, a ring on yet. I kind of screwed up when I made this one. Um, but this is just with fishing line, and to be honest, I really like the fishing line. But I have this thin gray wire. I don't know what it's for, but I've had it forever, so I'm trying to use up some of the things that I have. Um, you know, so like, I, I like to do things that have a lot of different styles. But right now, I can't get to all my beads. So what I did, I have a box, um, I'm sure we all have one that catches a lot of my, my excess beads. And when I dismantle jewelry, which is the number one way that I get beads, I keep the things that I don't, I can't sort into a container. And the container that I'm keeping it in right now is a 12 by 12 scrapbook container. Um, so a scrapbook paper container. So, um, and it's like full. So I'm trying to use up some of that. Uh, I figured I'd show you these. I had picked up a random bag. I love the Goodwills in Virginia because when you go in there, first of all, they have a clearance. North Carolina does not have a markdown section or a clearance section. Um, they had a bag and it was full of random things. And all of these bags of bead caps were in there. And um, there was other things like there were dry erase markers, which I'm gonna use for my fridge. There was nail clippers. Um, there was a ton of stuff. A bunch of old style um, post buttons, which I like to use on journals. So I kept a lot of what was in there, and then a lot of it I threw I threw out. But it cost two ninety nine. So these alone to me, one bag of these will go for a couple of bucks. So that was a one thing that I I just had to get. One of the things that I've been doing is making paper beads because I started making these little charm things. And I'm like, you know what? You know what would really look awesome on one of these is some book pages. And I said, I'm gonna make some book page beads and, um, and add them to it. So I'm gonna show you what I did. First of all, I cut these down and I cut the, the edges off the paper, the white. I kept the white on the bottom because I'm rolling it. So the more I can give myself to roll, the wider the bead will be. I still glued two and three sheets together, okay? This is my little bead roller. You can look up how to make one online. I took a box knife. I cut a bamboo dowel in half. And then I took the dowel, I took the knife and very carefully cut a slit. So you take the paper. I have another one that I used when I was making a lot of beads out of unwanted scrapbook paper. Um, so the slit is much easier to see on that one. But you go all the way down, all right? And then this, I cannot take credit for this idea. I did get this idea from YouTube, so. Um, and this, you know, these pages, they're Reader's Digest, so they're kind of wonky when they roll but I roll them anyway. I use them. I'm using them anyway. Because for what I'm doing with them, they're not going to be a focal point. So if they're a little weird, it adds excitement and interest. I'm going to glue the end. Try not to get too much. Yesterday I had so much glue on my fingers, it was like caked up. But I noticed that when I put my hand lotion on, which I just did, I might not have the glue might not want to stay to my stick to my fingers as much all right so sometimes the edge of the second page doesn't want to um, sometimes you got to put just a little bit of glue in there it's pretty well glued on there so um, and then I take the other side of the dowel that has it's a skewer, a bamboo skewer. So it has the pointy end and I take it in and I just make sure the hole is all set. Okay. And then what I did was I took my ink, whichever ink you want, 
just so it doesn't look just so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb and I go around the edges with the ink and then I might even daub the bottom a little okay and if I daub the bottom then I rub off whatever's still wet and that's what I was doing to him yesterday is I was daubing the bottom of the bead and then I just take the whole thing and just whatever's extra on the bottom so it looks like this okay and they're like so easy so so easy and it's a good way to use up book pages because I have probably a dozen readers digest blocks and I'm, I can't bring myself to throw them out um, so the next thing I already got a bunch of them started I am no beadsmith okay I am NOT a jeweler all right my method is very crude I don't wrap I don't um, you know I, I do what I can to make it work all right so just remember that when you're watching me do stuff so like this one here I can I can put together so I'm gonna put it together these are ones I did last night okay and sometimes I adjust the wires a little bit so that they are so that they're staggered uh, you know from each other let's get some light directly on my hands here so they're staggered and then the easiest thing to do is to cut all these at one you know line cut a straight line these cutters are crappy but they're what I got and then I have to go buy some more crimp beads and listen very carefully I am about to crimp these without a crimping tool okay I know please keep save the lectures I know everything okay I know all about what I'm doing I know all about how wrong I am for not owning a pair of crimping pliers I know I know I might have crimping pliers I have a pair of pliers that I love and they're rusty and they're crappy but they like grip onto things when I'm trying to pull apart jewelry or if I need to hold something together those things because they're rusty the rust grabs onto things <laughs> so that's why I love them these are not it I don't know where they are right now I did just stumble on them the other day though so I do know they're around but I had a bit of an organizational mishap so they could be anywhere all right so there's that it is not perfect by any means but it is going to add a little bit of something to a spine and I think the thing I love about these is that they're not perfect so I take my wire and I cut as you can see over here I cut a bunch of them up and um, I made these little tags out of um, that one looks like crap because I tried to put resin on them but that didn't work very well sorry for my ugly arm um, this one also looks like crap but we'll poke the hole out this one was resined and um, I made a bunch of these with a die that I have I'll show you in just a second I have a whole spaghetti jar full of them I'm just trying to make a hole here so I can get a piece of wire through it because I resined over the hole on accident and resin heals itself didn't know if you're aware of that but yeah resin will heal itself so hurry up and push it through before it heals itself it'll take a few minutes but it will it will heal itself um, this is my spaghetti sauce jar full of little tags that I made see them all I made them with napkins uh, I put book pages on a cereal box and then I put napkins over the book pages which is one of the things that I love to do and then what I'm doing is I am literally wrapping this around here okay I'm telling you right now this is top-notch jewelry smithery here okay and then I like to put a little bead on top to hide my horrific you know my horrific job of wrapping and then so I add a bead and that's all I'm gonna put on there okay then I'm gonna grab my next wire another thing I like to do is I take a bead again high-tech wire smithing here I roll it and I stick it back into the hole and that tightens it up a lot okay sometimes I need my pliers but with this really thin stuff I typically don't and then I just tighten that up there and then if there's a little tail I'll either cut it or I'll just wrap it like this 
So this isn't something anybody's going to wear. The wire shouldn't be poking anybody. So there we go. That is going to hold everything on there. And then I'm going to add another one. Okay. And then I will add a tan one. These came off of a hemp bracelet that was broken that I got in a jewelry bundle. All right, so that right there. And then what I do sometimes is I will take a bead and halfway up the wire, I will just stick this through and do this. Okay. So there, something in the middle. Okay. Grab the next one. Um, I have, we bought some bingo sets and they have these little, um, chips. So what I was doing was I was taking the chip and I was poking holes in it to make them into beads. So Sometimes the wire doesn't want to go in the hole, but I will pull it. Yep. I'll start this again. Let's go up through the other way. The hard part is to get the wire to do with, to go where you want it to go. But I'll show you what I did to make the holes in these. And yes, some of them I ruined. I will let you know right now. I've had three, I think, that I had to throw away. Uh, not throw away, but I, do, I can't use them as beads. But I can glue them down onto stuff. There we go. Now we are through the hole. And do this. And do this. All right. And then... Again, we want to cover up our little ugly wiring job down here. Okay, and let's find something to put on the middle. How about a green one? I have other things too that I want to take out that I want to use as beads like, you know, the, I have keys and I have, you know, a bunch of stuff that I have to, and buttons that you can add to these, you know, I have a bunch of stuff that I want to take out and do, but I have so many of these beads right now. I have been doing, I even added some shells. Let me show you what I'm doing for these. So I'm taking my chip and I'm finding like the top center, some of them that aren't really centered, and I'm actually taking my pokey tool and slowly working it through there, okay? Slowly, that is the key. And then I try and push it through to make the hole big enough so to um, fit some string through, and then I take it from the other side and just push it through the other side too careful not to break it so your awl doesn't go through your finger. Okay. So that hole should be big enough to put, you know, a thread or a wire through. 
Um, and that's all I'm going to be showing you for today. It's just a simple little thing. I'm sorry I haven't been on. I'm sorry I haven't been making videos, but to be completely honest, uh, my head has not been in a very uh, good, good place. And I don't, and I have been feeling irritable and I don't want to, uh, you know, spread that. I don't want other people to feel what I feel. And I'm afraid that if I make a video, I will just be negative and depressing. I'm not, I'm still not like, you know, a hundred percent at peace yet, but it, I will be, you know, I will be, and I'm feeling better and, um, just getting through the summer, you know? So I just wanted to share that and I don't usually air out my dirty laundry, but you know, I wanted to do that so that if anybody else is feeling that way, they know that they're not alone. I think a lot of people are feeling this way. So that is my video on my, I don't know, I guess they're like sparse uh, dangles. They're not very, they're not very heavy on the beading dangles and they're lighter in weight for that reason. So I was making, I'm actually in the process of making four or five different journals and I wanted to put something simple on the spine because I want to bead the spines on them too. And so this was my simple solution to a little, just a little charm on a spine of a journal. Uh, and those will be listed in my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is down below if you want to see some of the goodies I have. Um, and I will hopefully be making more videos later. I'm working on it, I promise. I'm trying, I promise. Oh, one more thing to show you. I have some of these that I didn't resin because I just didn't have time. So what I did was I printed out a bunch of itty bitty words. This one's hard. I made one that the font is really hard to see. So I'm hoping to put the words on here. Uh, you know, that says faith if you can't see it. I'm gonna ink them and put them on some of these that aren't resined. Um, so that was another thing I'm working on. But I love you all. And if you want to see some of these go in my Etsy shop, just let me know. Because even if you bought them and used them as a template to make your own and then punched your own little holes, um, you know, the resin ones came out kind of screwed up, so I probably won't list those ones. But the unresin ones, I would list. They've been, I've covered them with a matte medium um, so that they didn't tack up. So if that is something that you would be interested in, just let me know, and I will put some in my shop, little little handfuls of different shapes. But I love you all. Ta-ta for now.